In Germany and beyond, there is an insatiable hunger for Nazi memorabilia. Artifacts, paintings, documents. And I have this gift to forge. When I learned that in 1945, a plane carrying, so it said, Hitler's private archive had crashed in East Germany, it seemed like a forger's dream come true. One document in particular caught the imagination of Gerd Heidemann, a journalist on Stern magazine. Hitler's diary, smuggled, I told him, from East Germany by my brother. Are there more, he asked, offering me a fortune in cash? Plenty more, I replied. Also, Hitler's lost opera, Wieland the Blacksmith. Gerd had found the scoop of the century and his destiny. He saw himself as a hero on a great Wagnerian quest. My name's Conrad Fischer, by the way, but everybody calls me Connie. Mahatma Gandhi, you're the top. You're Napoleon Brandy, you're a German raid by Mr. Schmidt at night. You're the Stuka noise, Goering poise, you're Nazi might. You're Swiss cheese, you're a bottle of whiskey, you're strip cheese, that is rather risky. I'm completely not like General Smutter Flush. I'm the baby, I'm the bottom, you're the top. Oh. You're the top. I'll be the big, you're uh, You're the head. I'll be sketched by Jura. Uh, you ring every bell, you're a top hotel in Cannes. A priceless Lepidoptera, uh, a Wagner Opera. You're Superman. I wanted you to see it first, Fritz. You're my most excellent customer. I'm just not sure if I can afford to buy anything else at the moment. Oh, it's very rare. They're watching my brother like hawks. I'm not sure how many more goodies are going to be coming from the East. I may need some time to raise the cash. I'll reserve it for you, huh? Shall we say a week? Oh. Oh. man in a watching so don't react to what I'm about to say to you I've made contact with Conrad Fisher stay cool Thomas let's take a walk and not only can his brother provide diaries there are paintings a sequel to Mein Kampf and hold on to your hat the score for Hitler's opera Wieland the blacksmith and his passion for Gundilla the Icelandic Valkyrie Offered him two million marks. Jeez! Thomas, this is the find of the decade. The century. I suppose when you stop to think about it, it's a bargain, really. Exactly. Come on. 
On the other hand, it's not our money. We'll have to work hard on Henry. No more Nazi crap. Those words still bang in my ears. We're not going to discuss this with Nannan. What? But he's the publisher. The founder. The publisher. The founder. Not the power. Not anymore. The power is with the money, and the money's with the owners on the ninth floor. This weekend, I walked through Bavaria with my great good friend, Wilfried Solga, who, by a lovely stroke of luck, has just been made sales manager for Gruner and Yar. A good omen, don't you think? You must prepare for us a kind of prospectus. <laughs> oh, God! Can Fisher really deliver? Is he for genuine? Heidemann is the bloodhound. Heidemann has the nose. So far, his nose has been sniffing a pleasant aroma. If it's true, if these diaries do exist, we'll sell this story around and around and around the world! <laughs> Just as beautiful as I remember it. Let's go to the vault. I want August to see this. August? Yes, August Prisak. He's the expert on Hitler and the Reich. I thought of having my collection valued. Yeah, good idea. Oh. August, this is the legendary Conrad Fischer. It can't be. The last time I held this in my hands was back in 1936. It must bring back some wonderful memories. It surely does. Wait till I tell Billy about this. August is collaborating with Billy Price, the great Texas collector. I wish he the guy that bought one of General Herpner's tanks and put it on his front lawn. That's my Billy. We're writing the definitive book on Hitler art. When he sees Fritz's collection, he'll go crazy. It's completely superb. <sighs> I bless the day I found your shop. So do I. <laughs> the explosion catastrophe at Reinsdorf is all I need. It's him. I'd know that writing anywhere. Where did this come from? It was salvaged after the war, from a plane crash. Gundelfinger's plane. Precisely. My brother liberated a whole trunk full of documents from a bunch of peasants back east. Of course, the dimwits didn't have any idea what they were giving up. But you must bring us more documents. History will thank you. You are our salvation.
our companies think the risks are too great, I suggest I seek out a publisher in the United States. Master stroke that. Thomas did a good job, but his style was dry. I've added excitement. I'm really sure you did. They'll leap at it. I'm sure they will, and I've come back to bed. There's just one possible obstacle. What's that? Well, Gruner and Yar paid me 50,000 marks for books I didn't write. Manfred might be a little... Well, he might bear a grudge. What do you think? I think nothing or no one can stop you. No. No. No, you're right. I just must be confident tomorrow. Strong. Strong like Veland the blacksmith. Just be yourself. And if I'm Veland the blacksmith, who are you? Gundilla, the Icelandic Valkyrie. <laughs> Fascinating. Why didn't you take this to Koch and Naram? We didn't think that they'd be sympathetic. Now, oh, they're hostile to anything that might, uh, well, it might humanize the Reich. In fact, well, Nanan put the kibosh on my SS books precisely because I tried to treat the subject in a three-dimensional way. That radical chic attitude again. My friends, this is riveting. But is it true? We believe it is. Huh. I used to believe in the tooth fairy, but I'm glad I didn't give him two million marks. <laughs> <laughs> it is true, though. It is true. Well, look. Imagine, hmm? come with me. 20th of April, 1945. In Hitler's bunker. Hmm? Papers, property, valuables, staff being evacuated to the Alpine Redoubt near Berchtesgaden. This was the famous Operation Seraglio. Now, ten planes were involved. Nine safely reached their destination, but one plane, the plane piloted by Major Friedrich Grunelfinger, the plane which carried the mysterious metal trunk only traveled one third of its journey. It crashed in the Heidenholz forest. Imagine, hmm? A figure writhing, screaming in agony, trapped inside the wreckage, the intense heat making rescue impossible. When Hitler was informed, he went berserk. He screamed in agony. It was a catastrophe. His one testament to posterity. Destroyed. Thomas and I retraced the events of Operation Seraglio. We actually visited Gundelfinger's grave. There can be no doubt as to the authenticity of this story. I personally know almost all who survived Hitler's bunker. I've checked the facts with them. It is true. We have the opportunity to purchase this historic archive. If you consider the risk too great, then I shall seek a publisher with money and vision in the United States. Peter, come up here, please. How much will you need? 200,000 marks, as a deposit against the first three diaries. OK. What can you leave? <laughs> Tonight? My case is downstairs. Time is of the essence. One diary is already in private hands. If he should decide to sell, the story would be blown wide open. You must leave immediately. 
Gerd Heidemann, Peter Kuzel, our new financial secretary. Peter. Hello. Peter, Mr. Heidemann must have 200,000 marks in cash tonight. But, Dr. Fisher, it's 6.30. The banks are shut. Give the money. Well, I suppose the Deutsche Bank at the airport may be open. I knew you'd find a solution. Good luck, my friend. It'll keep me posted, and I'll try and keep Kosh and Nan on a day. Manfred, you've made a great decision for us and for posterity. Fine to see a managing director, really. Manager. Well, Manfred's no fool. Gruner and Yar are controlled by the Bartelsmann Corporation, and he's been tipped to take over the running of their entire $2 billion empire. Won't do him any harm to arrive at Bartelsmann as the guy who engineered the biggest publishing coup of the decade. Century. <laughs> Century? <laughs> I'm in Stuttgart. The quest for Fisher is nearly over. We're on the road to Valhalla, my darling. I hope you took your overcoat. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm warm. I'm very warm. I don't know how you do it. I work all day, and then, out of nowhere, pop roast. Just call me Superwoman. <laughs> Hello? It's Gerd Heidemann from Stern. Hi, how's the weather in Hamburg? I'm not in Hamburg, I'm in Stuttgart, near the station. Lissenstrasse? You only gave me your business address, but I guess from your telephone number you must live somewhere near here. <laughs> you must have psychic powers. I live in Ditzenstrasse. Mr. Fisher? At last. Connie, please call me Connie. Yeah. Here's to unexpected visits. The future. Well, um, actually, good. We might not have a future. At least not together. Um, I've had another approach. America. Somebody, well, let's say somebody big. Somebody very big and, uh, well, two million dollars. Okay, Connie. You can deal with the Americans. You can grow old and grey while they give you a Niagara of bullshit, or you can deal with a German company. People of action. After all, we did invent the Blitzkrieg. A 
good faith advance for the first three diaries. 150,000 marks. Diaries? I'll tell you later. Did I? Herman Goering's dress uniform. Is it for sale? No. No, it's priceless. I'd planned to give it to you as a way of sealing our future, but you say we have no future. <laughs> Hold on, girls. I, I, I wasn't thinking correctly. Of course, the Führer's diaries must go to a German company. We have a great future together. To Connie and Gerd. Gerd and Connie. Many years ago, I sensed a hunger in our nation. And then it was my calling, yeah, my calling, to feed this hunger, this ravenous appetite for the past. So I set up a shop, a kind of delicatessen for the soul. First, only our people came here, but gradually word spread. I had the English, the French, the Americans. <laughs> many, many Americans. I grew to understand that this same hunger existed all over the world for anything to do with the right. Now look at this, look at this. This is fascinating. Now to look at it, you'd think it was a perfectly ordinary outfit. But then I found a piece of authentication that put it in a completely different light. This is the dress suit worn by Hitler for the opening of the Reichstag, 1933. It's overwhelming. Lucky I found that card, eh? I mean, oh, what greater vocation could a man have? The satisfaction, well, it's beyond cash. On the other hand, you've no violent objection to cash. Not at all, no. So, let's talk business. Great. 50,000 marks per diary. We're also interested in Mein Kampf II, the Wieland score, and any other major archive material your brother can produce. OK. Excellent. I'll talk to your lawyers in the morning. No. No. No lawyers. This is between Gerd and Connie, yes? Yes. <laughs> and now, I must give you something to seal our wonderful collaboration. How about this? Nude on a green background. Hitler painted it himself. This is his niece, Geli Rabel. I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, you gave me a genuine Goering uniform, and now I give you one of my Hitler paintings. I would say that our relationship is off to a perfect start. Thomas, look, I'm sorry to ring you so early, but I've, uh, I've been up all night. I, I, I thought you'd want to know how it went. Of course. How did it go? Extremely well. He's very keen to do business with us. How much does he want? 85,000 for each diary. I don't think that's out of line, do you? No. No, I, I, I don't think that's out of line at all. Mr. Heidemann. Your account is showing a credit of 995,000 marks. Oh. 
Are you getting the bones in with last night? Well, I did great business and I needed to celebrate. That's what I need you for. Dancing, drinking, erotic earthquakes. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you need Edith for? I need Edith for pot roast. But who exactly is this guy? I promise not to reveal his identity. All I can tell you is that he's a rich collector and his brother is a general in the East German army. His brother is the source. He's risking his life. His life, Wilfred! That's all very dramatic, Gerd. But I'm extremely unhappy with this 200,000 having gone and nothing yet to show for it. There's goodwill to show for it. But when do we get beyond goodwill? Well, he expects the first consignment in a week. Smile, Wilfred. It's a gilt edge investment. No cause, Miss Slater. <laughs> they reek of age. history in our hands. Mm. I wish I could understand the writing. Yes, I hadn't realized they'd be written in the Gothic script. Can, can anyone decipher it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, April 15th. My health is poorly. The result of too little sleep. April 16th. My stomach makes it difficult to sleep. My left leg is often numb. April 18th, I suffer much from sleeplessness and stomach pains. I ate nothing <laughs> while Ava enjoyed her vegetable hot pot. <laughs> 
Gentlemen, gentlemen, um, please. Uh, Thomas and I would like to make a, a serious point. <laughs> if the slightest hint that these diaries exist should ever slip out, then my contact assures me that not only would his brother cease supplies, but that his very life would be in danger. No one from the outside must be allowed to examine the diaries, therefore, until we're in possession of the complete set. But there must be authentication tests. Oh, they're right, they're right, Jan, for now. All information must be restricted to the inner sanctum. I don't even want Kosh and Nan and briefed until all the transactions are completed. So we will be continuing with the project? No question. The management is 100% behind you. To Gert. For bringing us this magnificent gift. The publishing coup of the century. The Hitler Diaries. The Diaries. The Diaries. The Diaries. began to meet the keepers of the flame. I gradually saw what we've lost. That we have the economic miracle. They have the belief. Well, holding the books this morning, looking at the writing, I felt the power. Even if I couldn't understand a single word. Thank you. I mean, it's, uh, it's moving to be even a small cog in the historic machine. Did you go east to collect them? Which were dangerous. So how did your brother get them to you? You know that pianos are East Germany's biggest export. Yes. Well, our cousin Stefan is the foreman of a piano factory. So? Diaries are being shipped to you inside pianos? And I meet them at the board. It's child's play, really. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> 35 years after the end of World War II, the worldwide demand for magazines and books dealing with the Third Reich seems to be insatiable. Only Jesus Christ has had more words devoted to him than Adolf Hitler. We know about the movement of his bowels, the appearance of his genitalia. We know that he liked cream cakes, dumb blondes, fast cars and mountain scenery. And that he disliked lipstick, modern art, opinionated women and the screech of an owl. But for all this immense detail, we've been left with a phantom, a center of nothing. Until now. Now, we can see inside the Führer right into the man. Excellent presentation, Wilfred. Honestly, the hairs are standing on the back of my head. This is Sidney Mayer, head of Bison Books. This man was no Nazi. His wife was in the resistance. I don't want to end up as Hitler's publisher, but Hitler sells. Nazis sell. Swastikas sell. And they sell better and better. It's the swastika on the cover that gets them. No one can out swastika us. I even thought of putting one on our vegetable cookbook because Hitler was a vegetarian. Mayer's made a fortune and he's just peddling retreads. We've got the actual mind of the Fuhrer to sell. And through Bertelsmann, we have access to 185 subsidiaries in 25 countries. In America alone, they control Bantam Books and Arista Records. I tell you, this is why I'm so high. The marketing possibilities of Adolf Hitler's secret diaries are literally 
incalculable. <laughs> Manfred, I must speak to you. I must talk to you. Sure. Have you gone through Heidemann's contract? Not yet. His demands are simply incredible. Only he can deal with his contact. All transactions must be in cash. It sounds correct so far. Correct. We provide him with almost unlimited sums of money and there are no records. No accounts, not a single adequate safeguard. His contact must be protected. We agreed. Sir Fisher, is it all right to send this out now? Yes. We are taking all the risks and, and gambling with two and a half million marks. I'm talking business now. Right. Let's talk business. Let's talk business. Heidemann is the only one who knows the collector's identity. Huh? He could go to Bunter or Quick or direct to the US, do the deal, Jan, and do it fast before we lose the most important story in this company's history. I am not happy. I'm not interested in your happiness. I'm interested in our finances. Do the deal, Jan. And give Heidemann a 300,000 advance when he signs the contract. I happen to know he has a lot of financial obligation. Two and a half million marks. We'll get our money back ten times over. Remember, swastikas sell. Hello, Peter. <laughs> 480,000 marks. Dr. Fisher, with all due respect, we are a major publishing corporation. Not the Mafia. With all due respect. Of course. Your rectitude does you credit. I owe you an explanation. Come. Come. you to feel honored you are about to join an extremely elite group They came from Bernersdorf. Yes. Amazing. Is it? <laughs> Terrific tax breaks for the corporation on any material purchased in East Germany. Ah, Gerd, I need you. Sorry, Peter, in a terrific hurry. We're doing a major series on the arms race. A bit old hat, isn't it? Do you two know each other? Peter Koch, Peter Koisel. Listen, Gerd. I gave you to the history department on a temporary basis, and I want you back on news. Believe me, Peter, I'm making news. What the hell are you and Walter working on? I can't tell you. What do you mean you can't tell me? I'm the bloody editor! Peter, look, I'll tell you one thing, and one thing only. I'm working on something very secret, very important, big, enormous. And I'm backed 100% by everyone on the ninth floor, up to and including Manfred Fisher. Oh, uh, nice meeting you. and 80,000 marks. Worth every fennig, if I may say so. It's 
That's all there. 300,000 marks. Um, Gerd, I wonder, um, could you read me out some extracts? It's so frustrating for me, but I can't decipher the Gothic script. Of course. Of course, it's the least I can do. Um, let me see here. January the 18th, 1933. Although I have become Reich Chancellor, I have not forgotten Eva's birthday. So he uh, painted a portrait of himself for her. Eva is the sporty type. It has helped her very much to be in the open air. It's like he's here in the room with us, you know. On Eva's wishes, I have been thoroughly examined by my doctors. Because of the new pills, I have violent flatulence. And Eva says very bad breath. Thank you, Gerd. I don't think I can take any more. Yes, I understand. Now I've uh, got something else for you. This is the actual pistol that the Fuhrer used to take his own life. You're joking. No joke. And I can let you have it for almost trade price. Dr. Fisher to head Berthel's Gerd Schulter Hillen named the successor. Does Schulter Hillen know about that? Uh uh. Will he be supportive? A man's a technician, he's not a journalist. He may well rock the boat. We'll know more at lunch. I'm sorry, Leo. Someday I'll be able to fill you in.
successor is coming to lunch. <laughs> well, this is quite a shock. It's a happy shock, of course. But uh, this really is um, something. I mean, uh, I can't understand the Gothic script, unfortunately, but I can tell that this, this is definitely something. I leave you not a bad inheritance, Gerd. <laughs> Certainly, you have left me uh, something. How much have we paid out already? Uh, 1.8 million marks. The price, I'm afraid, is going up. 100,000 per diary. Heidemann says the collector's getting greedy. I'll need your authorization for another million. See, si. another million. These are genuine, I take it. <laughs> we wouldn't have spent nearly two million if we hadn't been confident. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, of course. <laughs> and the money was given to Heidemann in cash? Yeah in order to protect his contact. Mm -hmm. Where is Heidemann, by the way? Uh, Mykonos. He is coming back, I take it. 